Good morning. We're going to do this day in history for October 5th. Most of today's stories were very interesting to me, and I wanted to tell you all about all of them, but I do like to keep my videos shorter rather than longer. I encourage you to use the links in the show notes to find out more of the juicy details about these stories today. And today we're going to start back in 1775 when General George Washington informed Congress of espionage. In July of 1775, Washington had named Dr. Benjamin Church the first Surgeon General of the Continental Army, only to find out three months later that Church had been spying for the British since 1772. Church faced an Army Court Martial on October 4th, 1775, and then General Washington informed Congress of it today in history, this day in history. In 1813, Shawnee Chief Tecumseh was defeated. 1882, on this day in history, the rocket scientist Robert Goddard was born in Worcester, Massachusetts. He'd been interested in outer space since he read H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds when he was 16. He started thinking seriously about rockets the following year in 1899, and another for one that ran on solid fuel. At this point, the government wasn't really interested in the idea of space travel, so he had a hard time getting grants for his research. Finally, a grant from the Smithsonian Institution enabled him to do research and publish a paper on a method for reaching extreme altitudes in 1920. In the paper, he speculated that rockets could be used to reach the moon. The New York Times heard about this paper and published an editorial ridiculing him. He went from nobody to national laughingstock literally overnight. He didn't give up, though, and on this date in 1926, he completed the first successful launch of his liquid-fueled rocket and Auburn, Massachusetts. The rocket reached a height of 41 feet and an average speed of 60 miles per hour. Unfortunately, Goddard didn't live to see space flight become a reality. He died of cancer in 1945. In July of 1969, the day after Apollo 11 departed for the moon, the New York Times printed a correction to its scathing editorial of nearly 50 years before. In 1877, Chief Joseph surrenders. If you've been following these little vlog posts of this day in history, you might remember that we mentioned Chief Joseph of the Nez Perce Indians not too long ago. Well, on this day in history, Chief Joseph of the Nez Perce Indians surrendered to U.S. General Nelson A. Miles in the Bear Paw Mountains of Montana. He said, Hear me, my chiefs. My heart is sick and sad. From where the sun now stands, I will fight no more forever. 1892, the Dalton Gang is wiped out in Coffeyville, Kansas. On October 5, 1892, the famous Dalton Gang attempted a daring daylight robbery of two Coffeyville, Kansas banks at the same time. But if the gang members thought that the sheer audacity of their plan would bring them success, they were sorely mistaken. Instead, they were nearly all killed by quick-acting townspeople who had had just about enough of that nonsense. 1919, Enzo Ferrari makes his debut as a race car driver. On October 5, 1919, a young Italian car mechanic and engineer named Enzo Ferrari takes part in his first car race, a hill climb in Parma, Italy. He finished fourth. Ferrari was a good driver, but not a great one. In all, he won only 13 of the 47 races he entered. Many people say that this is because he cared too much about the cars that he drove. He could just never bring himself quite to ruin an engine in order to win a race. 1930, an airship crashed in France. A British dirigible crashed in Beauvais, France, killing everyone on board. The airship, which was Great Britain's biggest, had first been launched about a year earlier. 1947, the first televised presidential speech in the United States. Harry Truman, the 33rd president of the United States, called on Americans to use less grain to help Europe, which was still reeling from the effects of the Second World War. He asked people to avoid eating meat on Tuesday and eggs and poultry on Thursdays and to consume one less slice of bread every day. I'm on board with that. I'm not eating slices of bread at all right now. <laughs> Doing my part. <laughs> 1962, James Bond makes his theatrical debut. The fictional spy with the code name 007 was featured on the big screen for the first time in Dr. No. 
Based on the 1958 Ian Fleming novel of the same name, the movie starred Sean Connery as James Bond. In 1969, Monty Python's Flying Circus made its debut. The British sketch comedy series lasted for a year on the British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC. The show was commentary on daily life in Britain and had several recurring themes and characters played by Eric Idle, Graham Chapman, John Cleese, Michael Palin, Terry Gillum, and Terry Jones. The sketches are often thought to have had a strong influence on television comedy around the world, and I guess so. <laughs> Monty Python's what? I It's surprising to me that it was only on for a year. You can still find replays of it. Monty Python's Flying Circus. Yeah, those guys were brilliant and hilarious. 1974, American circumnavigates the globe on foot. American Dave Kunst completes the first round-the-world journey on foot, taking four years and 21 pairs of shoes to complete the 14,500-mile journey across the land masses of four continents. He left his hometown of Wasika, Minnesota on June 20, 1970. Near the end of his journey in 1974, he explained the reasons of, for his epic trek. I was tired of Wasika, tired of my job, tired of a lot of little people who don't want to think, and tired of my wife. During the long journey, he took on sponsors and helped raise money for UNICEF. American George Schilling boasted of a round-the-world journey nearly a hundred years before, but his feat was never verified. And another American, Arthur Blessed, holds the record for the greatest distance walked and the most countries visited, although he was propelled by a purpose rather than record book fame. Since 1969, Blessed has walked more than 34,500 miles, visiting 290 countries on six continents, all the while carrying a collapsible 12-foot cross and preaching Christianity. And I remember seeing Arthur Blessed on TV back in the 80s. 1975, English actress and singer Kate Winslet was born. In 1978, Isaac Singer wins the Nobel Prize in Literature. Isaac Bashevis Singer wrote in Yiddish about Jewish life in Poland and in the United States. And translations of his work became popular in mainstream America as well as in Jewish circles. 1984 sees the first Canadian in space. Mark Garneau flew as the payload specialist on STS-41G, the sixth flight of NASA's Space Shuttle Challenger. The flight that launched on this day was also the first space mission to have two women, Sally Ride and Catherine Sullivan. 1986, the Iran-Contra scandal unravels. Eugene Hassenfuss was captured by troops of Sandinista in Nicaragua after the plane in which he was flying was shot down. Two others on the plane died in the crash. Upon questioning, Hassenfuss confessed that he was shipping military supplies into Nicaragua for use by the Contras, an anti-Sandinista force that had been created and funded by the United States. Most dramatically, he claimed that the operation was really run by the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency, CIA. In 1989, Dalai Lama wins the Nobel Peace Prize. Dalai Lama, the exiled religious and political leader of Tibet, was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in recognition of his nonviolent campaign to end the Chinese domination of Tibet. In 1990, Henry and June, was the first NC-17 film shown in theaters. On September 27, 1990, the Motion Picture Association of America, MPAA, the organization that voluntarily gives movies their ratings, debuted NC-17, no one under 17 admitted, as a replacement for the X rating, which was thought to have become too closely associated in the public's mind with pornography. Newspapers and TV stations refused to advertise movies that were rated X, and video stores such as Blockbuster wouldn't carry X-rated movies. It was therefore believed that a new rating was needed for adult dramas that dealt with serious things but contained sexually explicit or violent content. 2011. On this day in 2011, Apple founder Steve Jobs died. 
the visionary co-founder of Apple Incorporated, revolutionized the computer, music, mobile communications industries with such devices as the Macintosh, iPad, iPhone, and iPad, died at age 56 of complications from pancreatic cancer. And that is really a fascinating story, full of human drama. I strongly encourage you to go to the show notes and click that link and read more about Steve Jobs and his life. It's really an amazing life. He, he really he got a lot done, and I was so sorry when he passed away. 2017, New York Times publishes the bombshell investigation into allegations against Harvey Weinstein. And that's going to wrap it up for us today on this day in history for October 5th. Thanks for watching. As always, links to my research are included in the show notes, and I encourage you to click through and read more about these stories because I found them all interesting. (laughs) I hope you do too. There's also a physical address if you wish to send me anything. As to this video, give it a like if you enjoyed it. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And feel free to share if you found it interesting or learned anything. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. On October... (laughs) On October... Okay, with the notifications. You funny little bird, what are you doing on the screen? Oh, okay. Why do I always say it that way?